Hey guys and welcome back to another Unregion 4 tutorial and in today's video we're going to be going over how to interact with something when you are close enough. So if you're not close enough you won't be able to interact, when you are close enough you will be able to interact. Now for a lot of you this might be quite a simple one which you already know how to do but I know just that a lot of beginners don't know how to do this and there's not a lot on this subject of how to do it so I thought I'd just make this quick simple video explaining how to do it, best ways of doing it and just this simple way as well. So let me hit play and just show you a quick example of this. So in this example it's going to be opening a door but you can do this in whatever situation you want. So if I have to press E while I'm here the door isn't going to open. If I go up to it and press E the door is now going to open and go through all the way over here. E it won't close. If I go up to it E it will close because again I am close enough to it so it will interact. So again in today's video I'm going to be doing this door example but you can do this any way you want and I'm not going to be going over how to actually open the door. I do have other videos going over that. Today I'm simply just going to be doing it so we're interacting. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what you want to do is you want to have this inside of a blueprint which you want to interact with. So I imagine you probably already have the blueprint which you're interacting with. But if you don't, what you can do is right click, go to blueprint class, get an actor, give it the name you want, for example, door, and then you can open it up. And this is the blueprint which you want to do the code in. So again, I already have this set up. In my viewport, I simply just have my door static mesh and then in the event graph I have my code for opening the door. So that's all I have set up. You don't need this to be able to interact. So to interact, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the viewport of the blueprint and we're going to add a component and we're going to add a box collision like so. And this is how we're seeing if the player is or isn't close enough. So this box collision is the area in which the player has to be in in order to interact. So with keeping that in mind, you can scale this up to be the size you want. So again, for me, the player has to be inside of this area to interact with the door. So I think for me, that is going to be fine. Again, make this whatever size you want, but for me, the player has to be inside this box to interact with the door. If they're outside of it, they can't interact. If they're inside, they can. So again, a nice, simple visual way to see where it is as well, because also if I were to compile, save, and minimize this, we can also see this in the level. So the player has to be in this area to interact with the door. So again, it's nice and easy to see. I'm going to go back into my event graph here. So in the blueprint, go to the event graph. What we're going to do is up in the top left components list up here, we're going to right click on our box collision, add event and add on component begin overlap. We're going to right click on it again, and add event, add on component end overlap. Because the begin overlap is when we enter the box, the end overlap is when we exit the box. So again, this is we're inside, this is we're outside. And by default, we're going to be outside as well, so you're not going to be close enough to be able to interact. So I'm going to move these up here to be in line with the rest of the code I have, which is simply just for opening the door. And what I'm going to do is you don't need to do this, but I want this to specifically search for the player character. So if you want to make sure it's only your player character which fires off this event, so the player has to be inside this box collision and nobody else, we're going to do other actor, cast to, and then cast to your character which for me is the third person character. Again, that is not essential. You don't have to do that if you don't want, but I just have it that, like that. So in case I have an AI which walks into the box collision, it won't fire off this code. It has to be the player. So again, not necessary, but it might make your game better if you want. And we're going to do that for both begin and end overlap. So cast to your character, which again for me is the third person character, but for you it could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. And after this, what I'm going to do is just in between these two here, so in the middle, I'm going to right click and get player controller. Because what we need to do as well is we need to make sure we enable the input of this blueprint. And I'm doing that because in order to actually interact with the door, we need to be able to press a button. And to be able to press a button, we need to enable the input. So off of cast to third person character, this top one here, coming out of the execution, I'm going to enable input like so nice simple node there and the target is going to be self so leave it as it is because we want to enable the input of this blueprint and the player controller is going to be get player controller and then the bottom cast of third person character sort of end overlap is going to be the opposite so disable input again nice and simple target being self player controller being get player controller like that but now we also need to add in this input key which we want to press to interact. So quite often that's going to be E or F. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit, Project Settings, and I'm going to go down to Input on the left here, 
under engine, scroll down to you find input, and we're going to use these. So I already have some, so I'm just going to delete that, and we're going to create an action mapping. And what an action mapping does is it just allows you to input different input keys for you to be able to use and call very simply, so you can have five different keys for the same thing. So I'm going to hit the plus action mapping here, naming this one interact, and I'm going to set this to be the E key, so you can simply just search E, and I'm going to add another one, making this the F key. So I have both E and F. Again, you can choose whichever buttons you want. And the benefit of action mappings means you can set up multiple keys, keys for different consoles, and you can also set up key bindings so the player can change these around as well. So I'm going to close that, and now back inside of this event graph, I'm going to right click and search for what we just named our action mapping. So I named it interact, like so, and now you can see we have this here. So whenever we press one of those buttons we just set up, which for me was E or F, it's going to fire off this interact action mapping here. And I'm just going to move this down a little bit to again keep it nice and organized. And so now the final step of what we want to do is we want to set up a gate. And so a gate is going to allow us to enter and exit this gate dependent on something else. So I'll make more sense in a second. So I'm going to come out of the pressed of our action mapping here and search for gate like so. So a flow control gate, we just want the normal gate like that. And the open is going to be enable input and the close is going to be disable input. I'm again just going to move this down ever so slightly like that. And now the exit is going to go into the code which you want to do so whatever you're interacting with that is what's going to happen. So for me my interaction is opening a door so exit is going to go into my code for opening a door which is this simple thing here. But if it's for picking something up you'll go into that so destroy exit anything like that. But again for me exit into your interaction code which for me is opening a door. So now why have we got enter, open and close as we have? So to enter the gate is going to basically go in and go out. So enter to exit. So to enter it is when we press E or F, so our interact key, because that is going to fire off this code. So whatever you want to fire off your interact code will go into the enter of the gate. Now open and close is how we're controlling the flow of the gate. So the gate has to be open for us to be able to enter and exit the gate. So we can always enter, but we can't always exit. So to open the gate to allow us to exit is just simply when we enter the box collision, so begin overlap. And to close the gate, we want to have that when we end the overlap, so when we leave the box collision. So if we walk inside and out of the box collision, it will open and close. So I hope that makes sense. And obviously toggle is just going to be the same. So if we connect this into toggle, you walk into it, it opens, you walk out, it's still open, and when you walk into it again, it will then close. So obviously I don't want that, but that's what the toggle does. So we can compile and save, and that is this code working. So this here is how we interact with something when we are close enough to it. So let's hit play and show you this working out. So I press E here, nothing is happening. I also press F, nothing happens. We go up to it, we press E, it's gonna open, and we press F, it's also gonna close because E and F both interact. And if I were to walk into it and out of it, press E, it still isn't going to do it because again, we are not close enough to be able to interact. So this is working perfectly. So I think that'll be it for the video. So we've done everything we want to do. We've set up this simple code in order to be able to only interact with something when we are close enough to it. We can't do it when we're too far away. And this is working perfectly. Again, just a nice simple thing to really get you into making your game. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.